If you're watching this video, you're probably going on a longer trip soon. And if you're anything like us, you're probably binging a whole lot of travel preparation and packing videos. Watch our video. Yes, we've got a video on that too. But do they really prepare you for traveling? Do they prepare you mentally? Unagi. Because traveling is great and it's one of our favorite things to do, but it still can be stressful at times, especially if you're traveling for a longer period. If you've been following us for the past year, you will know that we've been mostly traveling. So we thought it might be helpful to share everything we wish we knew before starting our trip, just to make life a bit easier for all of you who are in the same position we were in about a year ago. We've been digging deep into our learnings and we came up with three categories that we want to share with you today. Category number one, preparation things we wish we knew before packing. Our first learning is a lot easier said than done, but it's very important and it is don't worry too much. The whole phase of preparing for your travels can be quite overwhelming and also nerve wracking because there's a lot you have to think about and maybe you've quit your job like we have, maybe you've sublet your flat, and uh, maybe you're just worried about the things you might miss at home. But we can assure you, at least for us and for everybody we've met on our travels, you won't even think about these things once you've left home and once you're even at the airport. Many people also think that they're gonna care way too much about what's happening back home, what your friends are doing, if what things- What you're missing. Yeah, what you're missing phone. out on, if things are changing. But the reality is you're gonna have way better things to do while you're traveling to even think about what you're missing out on. And most of the time, nothing's even happening at home. Like <laughs> yeah. you're gonna come back and nothing's changed. That's also a sad reality is that normal life back home can be a little bit boring. It can feel kind of surreal when you're in a completely new country and you've got all these new things that you're looking at and experiencing to think that back home life is completely normal, people are going about their daily lives, working their jobs, and it's almost as if there are two different worlds. Yeah, it's just so far away. That's not to say you're not gonna miss your friends or family, but don't forget you will be distracted. Yeah. Worrying about a lot of other things. Like yes. You will worry <laughs> about things, but not about things back home. At least that was the case for us. Just get some new problems while you're traveling. Super convenient, <laughs> fleeing from your problems. That's the reason why we travel. Yeah! Now our next point concerns traveling with a partner. Whether it's a friend or a more romantic connection. And even if you're starting your trip solo, the chances are high that you're gonna meet some people along the way and you might travel with them for a short period of time or for the whole duration of your trip. Our learning there is to find a good way of making decisions together. Because traveling together basically consists of making thousands of mini decisions. Making them together makes things more complicated because you have to make compromises just like in any relationship. It's definitely good to talk about your expectations as well, about how much time you wanna spend exploring, how much time you wanna spend relaxing, how you wanna get from A to B. All of these decisions will then come up in situations that you don't expect them to come up in. You're arriving by bus somewhere or by plane and you're swarmed by thousands of tuk-tuk drivers that wanna take you to your destination and you might be very overwhelmed, you don't have any money, you're hungry. You don't have a SIM card. You're dehydrated. <laughs> this is not the situation you want to have an argument with your travel partner. This is the situation where you want to make decisions quickly. And that's why, A, we would advise you to prepare for exactly this situation. And especially before arriving at airports, like before you take a flight, there are four things that we always do in the country we depart. One check the currency uh, in the country you're gonna fly into and just decide how much money you want to get at the airport. Two, research which SIM card you might want to get. Maybe you don't want to get a SIM card, that's also fine, but it's always good to know before you arrive. Three, download a map of your next destination on Google Maps. And four, research the best way to get to your accommodation. Like which taxi companies are trustworthy, um, is it good to take a shuttle from the airport? Anything like that. You can just research it before you arrive at the airport and save yourself a lot of 
hassle. Oh yeah, and secondly, if you've spent a lot of time together already in your lives, you might already know who is in charge for which kind of decision. Like in a restaurant, <laughs> This is, this a is very, not a stressful situation this at all. Is, this is a very specific niche decision scenario. <laughs> no, I just mean you can choose who's head of what. Like you're head of restaurant tables, you're head of planning what to do in a city or in a country. I'm head of planning the route, I'm head of choosing which transportation to take, for example. Well, I'm the I head think... of fun, you know, the chief executive fun officer. That's cool. Mm. So basically treat traveling together like a business. Now when it comes to packing, I mean this is not a packing video, we don't want to make Check it... Check out our packing video. Yeah, we don't want to make this video about packing only. Our rule is to be ruthless, but stay comfortable. Because we've noticed that basically you're only going to wear what's comfortable. So if you've got things that maybe look nice, but that you don't want to wear, you're gonna just waste some space in your suitcase. Like I've packed one pair of jeans shorts and they're not even the most uncomfortable to wear or anything, but I've just had more comfortable shorts. So I always just went for them and I think I wore the jeans shorts like three times or something. You're always gonna go for the most comfortable alternative. That's what we are trying to say. And just keep it simple. Some people basically bring one outfit, maybe two, and then just wash that all the time. Yeah, and you can always buy stuff once you're away. They will also make great memories, these pieces. You can buy almost anything in any country. Some things might be extremely expensive, so okay, then you should probably pack them, or they're only available where you live, and those are the things you can focus on. All the other things, I wouldn't worry about too much. Yeah, it's basically travel gear. Things like a good, travel wallet or a good backpack. Those are the things I would focus on. Next, we have some bad news if you're planning to work out while you're traveling. Because you probably won't. We packed some resistance bands and even though they didn't take up much space in our luggage, to be honest, we didn't really use them. Especially if you're traveling to warmer countries, just sticking to a workout schedule can be really tough. I mean, we're not saying it's impossible, you know, if you've got iron will and discipline. And maybe have a quite a slow form of traveling, like you're staying longer in one place, then working out might work out. <laughs> yeah, pun intended. Hmm. If you always plan ahead and make sure that your hotel has a gym or that you're near a gym that you can use, or you are just really good at hotel workouts, then sure, you might stick to a regular workout schedule. But you will have to prioritize it and we just didn't. The way we kept ourselves fit in the end, or fit-ish you might say, is to just schedule a lot of hikes and a lot of outdoor activities that will keep you active. And especially for us, because we like to eat and we like to eat a lot while traveling, we just end up walking everywhere. And the last point we've got in this category is to get all of your doctor's appointments done back home before you start to travel. That's definitely one of the situations that you want to avoid if you can, is to have to go to a doctor or to a hospital when you're abroad. That goes especially for going to the dentist, probably also checking in with a skin doctor, just to make sure that, you know, if you're gonna spend a lot of time in the sun, you're not gonna have any issues afterwards. And that's not to say it's gonna be super dramatic if you have to go to the hospital somewhere, just get a good travel insurance and you'll be fine. It's just that it would take a lot of time from you and also might destroy your travel plans if you are planning to go to the next country soon or something like that. An SUV, a pretty big one, slightly ran over my foot, uh, which hurt quite a lot. <laughs> For example, I had all of my four wisdom teeth removed before traveling just because the doctor said they might get infected and I just didn't want to risk that. Category number two, travel planning. Now the first thing you need to know about travel planning is that it basically never stops. It's unrealistic to assume that you're gonna get all of your travel planning done before you leave for your trip. Of course, you may have your itinerary already and you may have already booked a lot of the accommodations or flights or bus tickets and so on, 
but you're still gonna be faced with the challenge of deciding what you wanna do on a day-to-day -day basis. So just schedule time for planning. Also while planning your route, like you don't wanna only spend two or three nights in every place you go to and don't have anywhere you spend a longer time, maybe just a day or two more than you normally would just to plan some things. You're probably gonna spend way more time in your hotel room or in a cafe planning your trip, looking at your phone or your guidebook. We didn't really expect that, but you just have to accept it. Yeah, and don't feel bad about it. Don't feel like you're missing out on activities and fun stuff to do. Unless you're a planning genius, which maybe you are, there's always gonna come the situation where you've only planned up until a certain day, and after that, it's all blank or your flight gets cancelled and mm -hmm. you'll have to search for an alternative. Because the next flight only leaves in two weeks. We've had that exact situation. And for some things it might be fine to book them just one day ahead, but other things like tours you maybe want to go on or going to your next country where the flights might not be that cheap, you'll always have to plan in advance a little bit. Plan in some time for planning. Well said. Okay, so our next learning is that we've noticed a reoccurring theme in our itineraries, at least in our good itineraries. <laughs> the, and ones that we feel, is... <laughs> the ones we feel comfortable with, yes. where, we, where we say, that was that, a good plan. That was a good itinerary. <laughs> and we say that a lot, actually. Yeah, and that is mixing it up. Because believe it or not, even beaches can get boring <laughs> if you spend too much time at them or if you just go from beach town to beach town to beach town. So basically everything in moderation. So of course beaches are nice, but then afterwards maybe a bigger city might be nice. Then a smaller city, then some nature, then back to the beach we go. And then a big city, smaller city, nature. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly that cycle but you get the point it's all about having that variation and then once you get tired of a particular scene like a beach or a nice sunset i always get so tired of these nice sunsets yeah and i hate beaches as well i mean it sounds weird but it can no, it, happen it's not about being bored it's more about valuing what you see and enjoying it to the fullest and i think you always enjoy time at the beach most when you haven't been to a beach for a long time and that's why it's really nice to have this circle going on. The circle of traveling. The circle of happiness. Bling. And then adding on to that point, we also like to schedule something that we would call a deload period. We don't really call it a deload period, right? But more like staycation maybe or workation, yeah. relax station. <laughs> when you're traveling, you're definitely in a state of sensory overload. I mean, you're experiencing much more than in normal life back home. And that might sound weird because for some people traveling is just like being on a holiday and you might ask yourself, why would I be stressed on a holiday and why would I need to take a holiday from my holiday? but yeah. it's actually not the same. If you're on a longer trip, you can basically see it like a lot of short trips just stacked onto each other. And so you need some sort of break sometimes in between these trips, just to reset a little bit, to relax, and yeah, to appreciate the next trip a little bit more. Otherwise, I wouldn't call it burning out because it just seems weird when you're traveling, but you can reach a state of being quite exhausted. Especially for countries that give out these 30-day visas, you might have a very long bucket list of things you wanna do in that country. And that might actually cause stress because like in Sri Lanka, for example, we had so many places we wanted to go. We had 30 days, so we were traveling a lot and we had a lot of tours we wanted to do. We wanted to do some hikes. We wanted to climb Adam's Peak, for example, but we also wanted to, of course, do this train ride from Candy to Ella. And it's just, you're always gonna be tempted to do as much as possible in one country. And those are the times where you really need to plan in some deload periods, maybe even after that country and yeah. another country that gives you a longer visa. <laughs> but the thing is, in the next country, maybe they also only have a 30-day visa that or even shorter. That was kind of our problem, so yeah. we never really did that. 
I mean, the good thing on our trip was that we were quite flexible with everything. I thought you were gonna say that we had COVID. <laughs> no, <laughs> but actually getting sick while traveling does help you deload sometimes. It forces you to do so. Yeah. And sometimes uh, that's a good thing. I mean, it, it's a positive side of being sick. Being sick is never nice, no. but still. It sounds weird, but that's one of my fondest memories from our <laughs> travels. It's sad. Uh, we spent a lot of time in one place, and I think that's what we really needed <laughs> at this point. So basically, the theme is that you can't go all in every day. And last but not least, for this category, flexibility is key. Plans change and you don't want to lose money when things like that happen. What we learned <laughs> is that A, it's good to book flights directly with the airline you're flying with and not via another page on the internet, even if they're cheaper that way. It's way easier to get your money back or to do some changes if you've booked directly with the airline. And B, try to go for a good cancellation policy. For example, on booking.com, you have many, many accommodations that offer free cancellation until the day before or something like that. And C, we learned that it's always good to pay with PayPal because it's a lot easier to get your money back um, if you've paid for something you didn't get. For example, if your flight got canceled or something else, your tour got canceled. So PayPal, if you want to sponsor us, we're open. Category number three, emotional well-being while traveling. Uh, this is probably the most important category because it's, it's all about enjoying your travels. Having the right mindset. Having the right mindset and believe it or not, you don't always enjoy traveling. And the thing is, you just have to accept that as a reality and that's fine. And everyone probably experiences this, so you really shouldn't feel bad. These are the things that you forget once you're back home and you're romanticizing your trip so much. Like you can't even remember one single bad day you had when in reality you have had hard times and you have had moments where you just want to be at home. In the grand scheme of things, it will always still be a good trip, at least yes. in most cases, at least for us. Learning number one. As I've just mentioned, plans change. But it's very important not to be hard on yourself. Even if plans change because you made a mistake or you, I don't know, booked the wrong dates or something like that. <laughs> and also in general, while traveling, you might just have some days where you feel like you have bad luck or people are not treating you right. I think what's important is not to get hung up in it. Like if you're at the airport, and your flight gets cancelled and then you find out that there's no restaurant open or things like that where you just feel like okay we could now just be angry be in a really really bad mood and i think those are times when it's important to know that you can always start again <laughs> mentally and it doesn't need to determine your mood for the rest of the day one rule that we have is that a good story beats being in a bad mood so even when things go catastrophically wrong. Simon is doing his best job to keep us safe. You can't change that anymore. I mean, that's basically a good rule for life in general. It's easy to, you know, get into this downward spiral and you keep telling yourself that, no, this is my trip, this has to go right and I have to enjoy it but those can be the situations that you will cherish the most. Maybe not in this situation, but afterwards. And try to laugh about it, especially when you're traveling with a partner. Try to hype each other up and make fun of the situation. But even if everything goes completely to plan, you might face a situation in which you're sitting in a cool spot and everything's fine, but you're still struggling with enjoying the moment. And that's also completely fine and it happens to everyone because you can't enjoy everything a hundred percent. I mean you can try to meditate and you know be fully aware of the situation you're in but it's probably just not what humans were designed to do to you know be happy a hundred percent of the time and the same goes for traveling. Or maybe you're thinking about the fact that 
you will have to go home soon or that you will not stay at this beach forever. And I think what really helps in this situation is to listen some, to some good music, maybe also some music that lightens up your mood and watch the waves. Uh, this Pretty. is getting very spiritual. <laughs> you will enjoy traveling, it's gonna come naturally, but yes, there's a lot of pressure on yourself to enjoy it because of <laughs> course you've probably saved up for this trip you had to you know, take a lot of days off or quit your job or whatever to go on this trip. Um, and there was a lot of organization involved with everything. And then you're finally there and you feel, huh, maybe there's something slightly off. And it could be the pressure that you're putting on yourself. And that leads us to our next learning because I think it's always easier to be in the moment when you're with friends or with a group of people. So what we're trying to say is be open and maybe also stay in hostels a lot because chances are very high that you're gonna meet some people that you like and that you're gonna want to spend some time with. Even as a couple, um, it's always nice to meet some people and hang out in a group rather than just in a couple. <laughs> can, <Sorry>. get, uh, <laughs> can get pretty boring, yeah. No, but Conversation dries up quickly. The best rule is to always say hello to people once you see them for the first time because then it's not getting to that awkward moment where you haven't said hello and still want to get to know somebody. Like I an think, instant icebreaker. Yeah, basically. and it's so easy. It's just the easiest way to get yeah. to know people. Most people want to talk. I mean, yeah, especially when you're, in a hostel or in situations yeah. like that. And when you're traveling, you're very open to get to know people, but most people are kind of shy. There will always be, you know, that one person who's very open and who will talk to everyone. <laughs> um, and that's We all a, know that yeah, person. Yeah, we all know that person. <laughs> yeah. Just taking that tiny first step of saying hi or asking for recommendations in the area can already make the difference between you, you know, going somewhere alone or going in a group and the experience is going to be completely different. So our last point is that travel does change you, definitely, but maybe not in the ways that you might expect. There's definitely a cliche out there that, you know, people traveling long term are fleeing their problems or you know, don't really have things figured out. And that might be the case for many people out there. But if you're facing some challenges back home, they won't automatically, you know, be solved just because you're traveling. Yeah, so for example, if you don't know what you want to do with your life, like you have... <laughs> this is <laughs> getting sounds, very deep. Yeah, that sounds wrong. No, but if you want to make a decision on what job you want to do, for example, you won't be able to make that decision just because you're in another place. If you don't know what to do when you're at home, you probably will also not know what to do once you're away, at least in most cases. Like if you want to work on yourself or do some changes or make an important decision, then I think you really have to plan in some time for that and not just distract yourself by going on tours and traveling and going from one place to another. I think you'll have to take breaks just to think about these things actively. The answer probably isn't going to magically come to you while traveling. Except you decide to become a scuba instructor or something Yes, like those that. are the exceptions. So if you want to be a <laughs> scuba instructor, a yoga teacher or a tour guide, um, then probably those kind of decisions can come to you while traveling. Okay, we hope that was helpful for you. And if you have already been traveling for a longer time and you have some tips or some learnings, then we'd be very happy if you write them in the comments below to help others. These kind of tips are very subjective, of course, and your mileage may vary, and it could be completely different for you. And otherwise, on this channel, you'll find loads more videos like this about traveling, travel tips, we've and- got a lot of things planned. Yeah, we've got a lot of things planned, and if you are new here, then we've also got loads of old videos that you can look at. So feel free to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of us and also support us. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Do you remember the time when we were traveling and that SUV ran over my foot? I do. Do you remember that time when we were traveling and uh, I got a bad cut on my forehead from my surfboard and I was bleeding everywhere? I do. Those were the times. Those were the times. <laughs>